Dr. Durline is an English teacher for the juniors at Fortman Christian Academy. In all her years of teaching, she's gathered a lot of knowledge on teenagers and has put it into her new book called Teenagers 101. Could you give a brief description of your book? Yeah, um, so this book is about, it's a parenting book for parents of teenagers to help them understand their teenagers because mostly what I hear from parents is they just don't get why their teenagers do what they do and they don't know how to talk to them and they don't know how to motivate them and their teenagers want to do different things than what their parents want them to do. So after hearing this for so many years from parents, I decided to write this book from a teacher's perspective to help parents understand their teenagers. Now, what, what exactly would you say is the difference between a parent perspective and a teacher's perspective? It's very, very different because parents know their kids at home and they're their own kids and they can't be objective about them at all. Whereas teachers, and usually they have two kids in their house and they're the only two kids they have experience with. Whereas teachers, I, for me personally, teaching 20 years, I've experienced thousands and thousands of teenagers and they come from all different walks of life. And so I have the advantage of kind of being able to see patterns of teenagers over the years and recognize what's a red flag, what's normal teenage behavior and so on. Whereas parents don't have that perspective. The other big thing is that parents see their kids at home when their kids know their parents are watching them versus teachers seeing them at school around their friends, dealing with adversity, dealing with challenges, dealing with peer pressure, and so on. So it's a whole different perspective. How many students here manage to uh, make it into your book? Nobody. Nobody? <laughs> uh. Nobody. No, because it's not about specific students at all. It's about composites of students, like types of students that I've gotten to know over the years. So while I tell stories about individual students because that's easy to understand, let me tell you a story about Jake. And then I give this fictitious name, but Jake is actually a composite of a lot of different students I've taught over the years who have been in that situation or have that personality that I'm discussing or whatever. What is your favorite chapter in the book? Um, you know, weirdly, my favorite chapter is not the chapter that everybody talks about. My favorite chapter is actually about how teens dress and speak because I have really strong feelings about it and I don't think parents take it seriously enough. And in it, I talk about how kids, when they get out into the real world, need to be able to speak without saying like every other word and they need to know how to dress for different occasions. And it's so important and parents don't pay enough attention to it. So that's probably my favorite chapter. Do you want to hear what parents' favorite yes, chapter is? Yes, I was about is? to ask that. Um, the one that I get asked about the most is they don't know when to get involved and when to step back. Their natural inclination is to email the teacher. Their natural inclination is to defend their kid if their kid's in trouble. And I say things like back off, let the kid accept the consequences, it's okay to let your kid fail. Your kid probably needs to fail to learn the lesson and and the parents don't want to hear that. So when I speak, that's always what they ask me about. How do I back off? How do I let my kid fail? They really, really struggle with that. So that's the one I get the, the most questions about. Hmm. In what cases would you say it's necessary for a student to fail? When they have brought it on themselves. So if they haven't studied or they haven't put any effort into an assignment, they should fail. That, that assignment. Well, the problem is, is that over the years we've gotten parents who are more and more involved, you know we call them helicopter, helicopter parents, parents. <laughs> um, and they, you know, they see a failing grade and they want me to do something about it rather than going to their kid and saying, you really screwed up, you deserve to get an F on that. Right. And as a result, kids really struggle when somebody makes them be accountable because they go for so long without ever having to be accountable because mom and dad kind of swoop in and deal with it and take care of it. Then they go off to college and that's when it really hits them. And so as a high school teacher, I'm trying to be straight with them about if you don't do this, you deserve to get a failing grade because that's what's going to happen in college. But 
oftentimes I feel like parents fight me on that and they're not doing their kid any favor by fighting me on that because the reality is they're gonna have to face the music one day and it's better to face it now than it is in college where you could fail a class and now you're talking thousands of dollars that you've lost and you have to retake the class etc now do you think that uh, that type of behavior really affects society Wh which type of behavior uh, not being accountable oh my gosh yes so now my husband hires people at his company and they have actually been trained on how to deal with kids in Generation X, um, which is the, I don't know how to take accountability, I don't know how to take responsibility, where they come in to interview and they think coming straight out of college they should make six figures and that they shouldn't have to work that hard to make it. And my husband and his, our generation, has had to go to training for how to talk to these kids and deal with these kids because they have these insanely high expectations and they're being told, don't hold it against them, it's because of society, it's because of their parenting. We have to work with them and get them to face reality that the real world is not giving them what they expect. Right. And I mean, how many seniors do you know who haven't gotten into the college they thought they were gonna get into, no problem, and it's because they've been told for years by us that if they just get through this school, they'll be able to get in anywhere they want. Right. And that's not it, reality. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Right, exactly. Now, the whole like being able to Google and find whatever you want in right. seconds, do you think that does affect uh, sort of kids these days, such as with a Instant gratification That's issues. exactly, and I was just about to say that. It's, you guys are known as the instant gratification generation, and you're so used to everything coming so easily to you that when you have to work hard, it's a struggle because you haven't had to go through those long, tedious processes that we used to have to go through. So it's definitely affected an entire generation of people to be able to have those instant answers you're also the trophy generation where you grew up getting trophies for just participating. <laughs> you remember yeah. playing sports as a kid and everybody got a trophy. Right. And so all of that has played a part in changing the whole mindset, the work ethic, everything. Hmm. Scary, huh? Yeah. <laughs>